In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a returns and exchange portal for your Shopify stores. Now, why might you want to create a returns and exchange portal for your store? Well, this will help to make returns and exchanges hassle-free for your customers, which will reduce costs when it comes to dealing with customer service. It will also help you to retain revenue in your store because you can encourage customers to make an exchange for another product or for store credit instead of giving them a full refund. And you can also help to drive customer loyalty by providing them with better customer service. And like I say, by offering them the ability to actually exchange an item instead of completely refunding it. So let me show you how the returns and exchange portal actually works. So the customer just needs to enter in their order number and their email address or phone number, click on start return, and then they will see all of the products that they have ordered. They can then go and choose the items that they want to return, and they can go and choose the reason. So you can go and create your own reasons. So you can see here, we've got arrived too late, poor quality, looks different, and you can go and create and remove any of these reasons so you can get more meaningful data back from your customers about why they are returning. They can also go and enter in a description and upload an image. You can then click on next and you will see the return solutions. So we've got refund for a store discount, refund to original payment method, replace with same item, refund to store gift card. And again, you can go and choose all of these. So you will see in the back end, you can go and choose the return solutions and you can go and toggle any of these on and off. So for example, if a customer wanted to return to store for a gift card, this is going to help you to retain that customer and to retain the revenue. Again, if a customer wanted to replace with the same item, it just means you need to send them out another product. So again, that helps you to retain them as a customer rather than completely refunding them. So that's the benefit of having a returns and exchange portal. So if we go for a refund to store gift card, and then a customer can choose to ship the original product back to you on their own, or if you want to, you can go and choose to pay for their shipping. And again, within the settings, you can go and set up this shipping and delivery yourself. So you can go and choose couriers that they can choose from. You can also turn this off. So then customers only have the option to return an item back to you by shipping it on their own. So if we go for ship with a return label, then a customer can go and simply submit their return request. Now, again, if we click on ship on your own, they can submit a return request and then it will come through in the back end as a return request and then you can review or reject that. So it's as simple as that for your customers to create a return or exchange request. And like I say, this is going to save you a huge amount of headaches when it comes to dealing with customer service and also when it comes to retaining customers and retaining your revenue and sales because you can go and get them to exchange items or you can provide them with store credit rather than a full refund. So now that I've shown you how the returns portal works, let's get straight into the tutorial for how to actually set up a returns and exchange portal. So in order to create a returns and exchange portal for your Shopify store, we are going to install this app called Parcel Panel Returns and Exchange. So I will leave a link in the description to the Parcel Panel Returns and Exchange app. Now, the great thing about this app is you can get started for completely free. So like I say, use the link in the description and from here, all we are going to do is click on install. Once you install the app, we can now start setting up our returns portal. So you can choose the order lookup method. I'm gonna leave it as default order and email or phone number and click on next. You can choose your return solutions. So we have refund to the original payment method, exchange for a different item, refund to store gift and refund to store discount. We can then click on next. You can choose the return shipping method for your customers. So if you don't want to pay for your customers' returns, you can simply untick these two methods and customers will just ship their own. So it's totally up to you and then you can click on next. Customers will be able to see their return statuses. So these are all of the return updates and then you can click on next. You will then be brought over to your parcel panel returns dashboard. And the first thing you can do is customize your returns page. So click on customize return page. From here, you can edit any of the text on your returns portal. So I'm gonna leave everything as the default, but you can of course go and edit any of this. You can also go and add a custom link to your return policy, and you can also go and edit the styling. So if you come over to style, 
you can go and upload your brand logo. So if I click on add image, and you can go and change your logo size. So if you wanna make it bigger or smaller, you can just go and use this slider. You can also go and upload a background image if you want to. And then if we come over to the exchange page, you can again go and upload any images that you want to. So for example, here we can go and add our logo again, and you can delete your brand name if you want to just have your logo in the corner like that. You can of course go and change any of the colors and things like that. And then customers will be able to see all of the products that they can go and exchange their original product for. Then you can simply click on save. And once you have saved that, we can close this area. You can then click on parcel panel returns on the left hand side, and we can continue through the onboarding. So now we can set up our return service widget. So click on set up free return service widget. And from here, we can go and add this free return service widget to our cart. Now this is if you want to offer your customers free returns. So that means you're going to pay for their returns. So you can go and turn on this free returns widget and customers will basically pay for this and it means that they can get free returns. So it's totally up to you if you want to go and add this to your cart. And then if you, don't, if you don't want to add it, you can just skip this part of the setup. It's super easy. You just click on setup. And then all you need to do is click on activate app embed. You choose how much you want to charge for your free return service. And then this will go and show in your cart. So all you need to do is click on preview and you can preview that widget in your cart. You can also go and change the content and you can go and change the styling of this. So you can change the button color. You can also go and remove the icon, show the icon, you can go and change the icon, you can upload your own icon if you do want to go and offer that free return service that customers can pay for. So now we can just close this. And again, we can click on parcel panels return to continue through the onboarding process. So now we can verify our return settings. So click on this. So you can drag and drop which one of your return settings you want to show at the top. So if you want to encourage customers to exchange items, you can just drag this to the top. If you want to encourage them to refund for store credit, again, you can drag this to the top. You can also go and toggle on and off any of these returns. So for example, if you don't want to offer refunds, you can just turn that off. Now, in most countries, refunds are mandatory after a certain amount of days. So you likely are going to have this toggled on, but you can go and toggle any of these on and off if you want to. If we come to return shipping methods, under return shipping methods, you can go and edit the return shipping methods that your customers can choose if they want to create a return. So you can go and toggle these on and off as well. So for example, ship with return label provided by the merchant, which is you. If you don't want to offer this, you can just toggle this off. If you toggle it on, you will see QR code. So you can allow your customers to scan a QR code which is connected to USPS and every to go and can create those shipping labels that they can use to return. Like I say, you can just go and toggle this off. If you choose ship on your own, you can go and edit any of the language if you want to, and you can go and offer green returns as well, which is another option. So it's totally up to you which returns you want to offer to your customers. If we go to return rules, you can choose the return window. So if you're going to allow customers to return within 30 days of fulfillment, so it's totally up to you what you want to set here, you can add a restocking fee. So if a customer makes a return, you can go and add a restocking fee. So this can be a fixed restocking fee or a percentage, and you can do this based on a particular return solution. So for example, if they just want a full refund, then you can charge them a restocking fee. You can also charge them a shipping fee if you are going to offer them a return label. You can also offer return rewards. So this incentivizes customers to choose a different return option. So they could go and choose a gift card or a store discount rather than getting a full refund. And you're going to give them some rewards for that. So you can go and set up rewards and you can go and edit your exchange settings as well. If we come over to logistics integration, you can actually go and integrate logistics providers into your returns portal. Now, this is really helpful if you do want to offer your customers free returns, or if you just want to offer your customers the ability to be able to return their parcels super easily, they can go and choose the courier straight away. And as you can see, there's multiple different ones for the United States, for Europe, for the UK. So you can just go and toggle any of these on, and then you can go and create prepaid return labels. So this is really cool. So for example, we can just go and turn 
one of these on like this, for example, and now customers can go and choose these and they can scan QR codes so that they can easily ship the returns back to you. If we come to shipping and delivery in here, you can go and update your returns address so your customers can get the return address to send parcels back to you. If you come to return reason, you can go and add different reasons and edit reasons. So customers might be returning because it arrived too late, it was poor quality, it looks different to the image. So you can go and add return reasons and you can go and ask customers for image proof. So they need to upload an image if they are creating a return. If we come to automation, you can create return automations. So if we click on browse templates, you can click on auto approve return request. And this just allows you to approve returns based on certain conditions. So that means you don't have to approve every return manually if you don't want to. We can then click on back. And if you click on notification, you can go and choose the sender name for all of your return updates that get sent out to customers, as well as the reply email address. And if you click on notify merchant, you can also go and change the email address in here. And you can also go and update all of the emails that get sent out to customers. So for example, return request confirmation, that's to confirm that they've, up, that they've requested a return. You can go and toggle this on and you can click on customize. And from here, you can customize the text and the style of any of these emails. So you can then go and send a test email. You can go and update your brand logo and add these to the emails as well. We are just going to close this now. And once you have gone through all of these settings, again, we can click on parcel panel returns. And now we have gone through the entire process. Now, if we click on return page, if you scroll down, you can go and update the URL for your returns page. So if you just want to have it like this returns, so then you'll have your website.com slash apps slash returns. You can also go and change this as well. So for example, tools, returns, whatever you want to do. So you then will get your URL. You can simply just go and copy this and you can add this to one of your menus so that customers can access your returns portal. Now, again, if we come over to parcel panel returns from here, you can manage all of your return requests so you can approve and reject them. And you will see them broken down into people that want refunds and people that want to exchange items. You will also see the returns value, the return requests, and these will all be broken down into analytics so that you can review which of your items are getting returned the most or which of your items are being exchanged regularly. And that is basically it for creating a returns portal for your Shopify stores. Check out the link in the description for the parcel panel returns app. If you have enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more dropshipping and e-commerce content, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.